Every Thursday morning at this time, we do a segment on senior health with People's Health. Their Medicare organization, a Medicare Advantage organization, established in 1994. People's Health was founded by medical providers guided by physicians, and their primary focus is providing coverage to people with Medicare. Today, we're going to talk about training your brain. Many of us train our bodies in a number of ways, from exercising to doing physical tasks, But do we train our brains? We're joined now by Dr. Brent Wallace from People's Health. Dr. B, talk about ways to develop a routine to help you learn faster and improve your memory. Good morning, Dr. B. How are you? I'm doing well, Tommy. I hope you are, too. I am, sir. It's good to talk to you. Dr. B, of course, Chief Medical Officer of People's Health. Uh, I had done so much reading, Dr. B, for, for my job that I had gotten away from recreational reading. And I recently got back to it, and it was a little slow at first. So then I picked it up. Did I, in essence, train my brain? And what does it mean to train your brain? You you did. I mean, this has been a really uh, good opportunity for a lot of people to get back to training their brain. And, and it's really, I mean, it's just like you mentioned, it's just like a traditional workout. You know, when you work out and exercise, your goals are to increase your muscle strength and your physical stamina, but you can also develop a routine that strengthens and, and nourishes your brain and gives that a workout as well. Why is that so important? For your brain to get a workout, we all, again, we talk about physical health and, you know, I guess with COVID, Doc, you talked about, not you, but we we all talk about, well, you can't talk about the public health without looking at the economic health. And I guess you can't talk about the health of the body unless you look at the, the health of the brain and what's going on with the processes there, right? Definitely. Uh, you know, training your brain is just as important as physically exercising. And, and likewise, if you don't physically exercise for a while, what happens? You, you know, you lose muscle mass, you, you lose strength, you, you lose coordination. So it's the same concept with, with a brain workout. Um, you know, you're, you have to kind of understand the way that the brain works and the way it processes things to, to understand it. But, but essentially, our, our, our brain is, is composed of a, a lot of different skills that we've learned over the years. It's, it's responsible for the simplest tasks, things like walking or cooking or talking. Um, and those skills are really how the brain learns, stores that information, and then pulls it back out when, when you need it. So when you have new experiences, when you do new things or things you haven't done in a long time, your brain can actually create new pathways, much like working out can create new muscle, it creates those new pathways that actually, actually exercises the brain and makes you sharper so that you can do things more efficiently. Um, I think some of the most the most precious thing we have are memories in a lot of ways, right? And I always say vacation is not about the time that you're having then. It's what you, you, the, the, the memories you carry with you to get you through the rest of the year till it's time for vacation again. And along those lines, can exercise in your brain help with memory and remembering those special moments? Yeah, definitely can. And there's been a lot of research on this over the years. Um, it's kind of the use it or lose it principle. The the more you exercise your brain, the more likely you are to be able to retain those memories that you've created. And the more that you actually work to create new memories, um, the better it is for your brain health in general. So it's very important to stay active, you know, in terms of thinking and, and not become complacent and really just receive passive learning. You know, a lot of what we do is we, we watch things, we hear things. They kind of go in one ear and out the other, like we say. What you, what you really want to get to is where you're actually learning new processes and, and new skills because that's what's actually exercising and, and helping your brain to, to kind of develop that muscle. All right, we'll take a break. More with Dr. B when we come back. If you have any question, uh, questions about senior health, you can text them to 87870, and I'll pass them along to Dr. B, who is, of course, the Chief Medical Officer of People's Health. Later on, we're going to talk about some um, virtual community classes that are being held on peopleshealth.com. Peopleshealth.com, if you've not been, it's your one-stop resource. If you're a senior or if you're a grown son or daughter of a senior and you're trying to navigate your way through those choppy waters of health care, from doctors and medications to Medicare and Part D drug coverage, 
You can find everything, and I mean everything you need or want to know at peopleshealth.com. More when we come back. 821 here now. Traffic on WWL. 825, Tommy Tucker, WWL, talking about senior health as we always do. This time on Thursday morning with Dr. B, Dr. Brent Wallace, Chief Medical Officer of People's Health. Doctor, we're talking about um, brain health here and, and making a comparison to working out with your body. But actually, if your brain is sharp, that's going to kind of help you with some motor skills as well, is it not? And, and what about these pathways and how do you create those? Yeah, I think definitely the the sharper your brain is, the better you're going to do physically as well. And um, pathways is really what we call the creation of those new skills and those new memories that that we do to to beef up our brain. And um, the key things that you you have to think about with that is is creating new memories, but then also to do things repetitively. So repetition actually helps you learn and and then really learning new skills. So uh, taking up a new task or learning how to do a, a household project actually triggers those new pathways to be created, and that can make your brain stronger. A and lot of times um, I tell people some of the best things you can do are, are playing games. There's a lot of um, p- games and puzzles, uh, reading like you had mentioned, mm-hmm. um, and that can be reading either fiction or nonfiction. Uh, picking up the paper or reading on your phone or your tablet can actually uh, be just as effective. And socialization is important, too. Yeah, interacting with people is very important. You know, uh, language language skills are are a major part of what what we use our brains for, and so having those interactive discussions with people and and actually debating with people, you know, thinking of new ideas and ways to challenge yourself and other people can be very effective as well. You know, I I know like maybe learning how to woodwork or things like that, or that'd be something right to learn, or maybe home repairs or something like that. And what strikes me is I think some people are hesitant to do that because perhaps like myself, they're not very good at it. But you're not trying to get a job as a repairman. You're just trying to keep your brain going and learn the techniques, I guess, right? Sure. I mean, it, it goes to challenging yourself. You know, um, there's a there's a lot of things that you may think you can't do, but if you sit down and you read about it and you learn about it, maybe even watch a, a video about how to do a certain project, let's say a, a sink repair, mm-hmm. you know, it, it looks incredibly difficult and you think you can never do it, but you take the time to kind of look at what the steps are, learn what they are, and then actually get in there and do it. And that experience actually uh, helps to train your brain that, that new skill. And uh, that can be a very effective way of, of, of maintaining your brain health. When it comes to games and puzzles, does it matter whether it's electronic or uh, the traditional method? I don't know what you call a traditional puzzle, I guess a cardboard puzzle. No, it it really doesn't. Um, They're both as effective. Uh, You know, traditionally, we've done a lot of games, you know, board games, um, something like Monopoly even. You have to use skills in order to count money and make decisions and roll the dice and and count the number of spaces that you have to go. But but actually, uh, games on your phone or or on a laptop or or a tablet can be just as effective. Um, There's a lot of uh, Scrabble type games games, word scrambles, uh, Sudoku is another one um, that can actually uh, be very effective as well. And then one that I like a lot is is chess, sort of old school, but, um, you know, chess and not checkers. Checkers doesn't use your brain all that much, but, but chess at least involves strategy, and that strategy helps you create those new pathways. Uh, quickly, before we run out of time, what about diet? Very important in terms of what you eat? Extremely important. And there's a lot of foods that are considered brain foods. Um, You know, in particular, omega-3 fatty acids are very important, and those are found in a lot of the great seafood that we have around here. Uh, Vegetable oils um, have a lot of omega-3 fatty acids as well. Um, All the B vitamins are wonderful for brain health, and those can, can be found in fish and chicken and dairy products. And then vitamins E and C are very important, and those are also found in vegetable oils, but also eggs and green leafy vegetables, things like broccoli and and Brussels sprouts. Um, All of those can actually be very beneficial to your brain health as well. 
Doc, I appreciate your time. I really do. And of course, you got they got some at peopleshealth.com, some community classes, I guess, that can help exercise your brain, huh? Apparently, doctor's gone, but they are. You can go to peopleshealth.com slash wellness, and you'll find them, peopleshealth.com. Your one-stop resource for seniors and the sons and daughters of seniors to navigate your way through health care. 8.30, time for WWL First News. For that, we go to Dave Cohen. News for that, we go to Dave Cohen.